Good afternoon. I wanted to share with you today a journal that I made using these napkins. These three were gifted to me in a swap with Lori McMillan Morris and these others I had. Uh, most of them are from Tuesday morning. Um, this is the little journal. It's created uh, using a craft text cover with this napkin applied. The closure is ribbon and it's a single signature five hole pamphlet stitch. The inside pages are mixed media paper that have been colored with these various distress stains by Tim Holtz. And then they've had napkins applied. The only other pages in the book are some of my blueberry dyed paper. The inside cover I gessoed. If I had wanted the outside cover to be lighter, I would have gessoed it so that when you applied the napkin, instead of seeing the brown color of the craft text showing through, you would have seen white or green or whatever color I painted it. So those are some of the options that you have when you're applying napkins to things. Understanding that they're so thin that what's underneath uh, changes their color and also can add things to them. <clears throat> so in <clears throat> making this journal, when you're playing with napkins and you're doing, uh, and you're decoupaging them, and I use this uh, Americana matte decoupage medium, sometimes you goof up. So I saved the goofed up pages and took the best side and used, uh, made a little pocket here, and it has a piece of my eco printed paper in it. some leaves <clears throat> and there's a pocket on the back made out of another the other side of the folded page where I screwed up so I'm just going to flip through fairly quickly you can see this is a pretty simple journal because I just wanted to concentrate on coloring and using the napkins this is the blueberry dyed paper, some more of the eco print paper. And there's three little pieces here that are from Ephemeris Vintage Garden Secret Garden Collection that I had left over from another project. Uh, this is a goofed up page that turned into a tag. Another piece of the blueberry paper. Another one of the ephemeras vintage garden items. And I wanted to point out that sometimes if you have a napkin and this one, the background was pretty darn blue. Um, <clears throat> it's off of this paper. So I picked a blue area so that it blended in a little bit better. This was a messed up page and it's folded up and creates a double pocket. a back pocket here um, and that's the little end of that little journal so it's not uh, hard to make a journal not using uh, digital kits not using a lot of uh, little extra pieces this one is one which I'll use more like a glue book where I'll glue things into it because this is distress stain you can write on it easily with pens I did not gesso it Gesso has a tooth and it will ruin nibs on pens. 
So you have to be very careful about what you write on if you gesso, but with the Distress Stain, I can write on it uh, with any of my pens. Uh, another question that I've had is what do I use to put like my pockets and all on? I use Aileen's Tacky Glue. I think most people do use that. This little bottle is very convenient because it stands on its head, keeping the glue down near the tip, and that way it's always ready to go instead of having to do like the old ketchup bottle shake to get things to the bottom. Uh, I, it's not economical to only buy these. Uh, so I buy a bigger bottle that's cheap, cheaper overall per ounce and then just refill this one. Most people use, when they're putting on the collage glue, they use a, a foam brush and I saw a great uh, tip from Cheryl uh, on Deli Girl 1961 YouTube channel. She puts her brushes in a plastic bag and just keeps using them without ever cleaning them out and I thought that was pretty brilliant. I had shared with you how I got my five holes uh, equidistant apart in another video, but I thought I would just reiterate that here. Uh, I take a piece of paper, fold it in half that I'm going to use for my punching guide. I fold it in half to get the middle. I fold down from both sides how much, how far from the top and bottom of the page I want to be. And then I fold that folded edge over to the middle and that gives me my five points uh, to uh, punch on. And <clears throat> another thing is, is that if you don't have an awl, uh, there is a YouTube video about putting a sewing needle in a cork, but you can also use something as simple as one of these push pins to make your mark. I had also talked about on a previous video about when you're punching your holes on your cover, to punch from the outside in. I don't know if you can see this very well, but when you punch, it blows the paper out on the other side. And you don't want that showing on the outside of your book. So you, if you punch your holes from the outside on your cover, that will all be hidden inside the spine. So that is my little book and a few interesting tips and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.